Welcome to the second part in my tutorial series on getting started with ML agents. If you've ever wondered how to train AI agents in your Unity projects, you're in the right place. In the first part, we focused on getting ML agents set up correctly, configuring your Python environment, installing the required packages, and running your first test scene to make sure everything works. If you haven't already completed this first part, I highly recommend doing so before continuing with this video tutorial. You'll find a link to part 1 in the description below. Anyway, in this video, we'll dive into the push block scene from Unity's example project. It's a great starting point for understanding how ML Agents works, as it demonstrates key reinforcement learning concepts in a very simple Unity scene. But first, let's take a moment to introduce reinforcement learning and explore its foundational ideas. So, what is reinforcement learning? Simply put, it's a type of machine learning where an agent learns to make effective decisions by interacting with its environment. The agent tries different actions, observes the outcomes, and receives rewards or penalties depending on how well those actions achieve a specific goal. Over time, the agent uses this feedback to improve its decisions, aiming to maximize its total reward. This process is inspired by how humans and animals learn through trial and error, exploring, experimenting, and adapting to achieve better outcomes. One of the most famous examples of reinforcement learning is AlphaGo, developed by DeepMind, which made headlines when it defeated a world champion Go player, a game considered to be even more complex than chess. Building on this success, AlphaStar, another DeepMind project, demonstrated the power of RL by mastering StarCraft II, a real-time strategy game known for its deep and dynamic gameplay. Besides games, Reinforcement learning also has many real-world applications, such as teaching robots to perform tasks, improving financial trading strategies, and guiding autonomous vehicles. OK, now that we've had a quick introduction to reinforcement learning, let's take a look at how it's implemented in Unity's ML Agents. We want to open the ML Agents example Unity project that we used in the previous tutorial. Launch Unity Hub and then click on the project to open it in the Unity editor. Once the editor has opened, go to the Project tab and under Assets expand the ML Agents Examples folder. From the Examples, select the Push Block folder. From here, go into Scenes and open the Push Block scene. Let's take a look at what this scene is comprised of. In the Scene hierarchy, you'll notice a number of area objects. These represent separate instances of the training environment Let's expand one of these areas to see its components. Inside, you'll find several key elements, a ground and walls to define the boundaries, a movable block, a goal area, and an agent. Together, these components define one complete training area where the agent can interact with the environment and learn through trial and error. Technically, we could use just a single training area in the scene and the agent would still be able to learn. However, Having multiple instances of the training area, each running in parallel, significantly speeds up the training process by allowing the agent to collect more experience in less time. So, what problem do we want the agent to solve here? It's very simple. The goal is for the blue cube character, controlled by the agent, to push the white block into the green goal area. Training is divided into short, time-limited sessions, known as episodes in reinforcement learning terminology. If the agent successfully scores a goal within an episode, it receives a large positive reward. Conversely, the agent is penalized with a small negative reward for each step it takes, meaning it accumulates more negative rewards the longer it takes to achieve its goal. OK, let's see how this has been implemented in code. In the scene hierarchy, within one of the area objects, select the agent game object. In the inspector, you'll notice it has a script attached called Push Agent Basic. Double click on it to open the script in your code editor. The first thing to notice in the Push Agent Basic script is that the class inherits from the Agent class. The Agent class is part of Unity's ML Agents framework and provides the functionality needed to create and train agents. By extending this class, we can define how the agent interacts with its environment to suit our specific scenario. Now, Let's take a look at how this script implements the reinforcement learning loop, that is, how the agent interacts with its environment by taking actions, 
observing the results and receiving rewards. The Push Agent Basic class overrides three important methods inherited from the Agent class Initialize, On Episode Begin, and On Action Received. These methods play a major role in defining how the agent behaves and interacts with the training back end. Let's take a closer look at these methods and the Push Agent Basic class in general. First, let's examine the Initialize method. This method is called once when the agent is created and handles all the necessary setup for the agent. In the push agent basic script, initialize does the following. It caches references to important objects such as the goal detection component, the agent and block rigid bodies, and the area bounds. It calls the set reset parameters method, which adjusts certain environment properties, like block size and ground friction, ensuring the environment is ready to run a fresh simulation or episode. Before the agent can begin interacting with its environment, the environment itself needs to be set up and reset at the start of every training episode. This is handled by the onEpisodeBegin method. We will take a look at this now. The onEpisodeBegin method is again overridden and inherited from the agent class. It performs several tasks to prepare the environment for a new episode. First, it randomizes the orientation of the training area, which can face north, south, east, or west. Next, it places the block at a random location away from the goal. Then, it spawns the agent character, the blue cube, at a random location. Finally, it calls set reset parameters once again to reset any environment specific properties. So, under what conditions does an episode end? An episode ends when the agent either succeeds or fails in its assigned goal. Episodes are often time limited meaning failure can occur simply because the agent did not complete the task within the allotted time. In the push block example, success occurs when the agent pushes the block into the goal area, triggering a positive reward and ending the episode. Failure, on the other hand, happens if the agent doesn't complete the task before the episode's time limit. This time limit is enforced by the max step parameter in the agent class. Let's quickly go back to the Unity editor and I'll show you where you can edit the max step value in the inspector. Now, before an agent can take any action in an environment, it must first make some observations, which it uses to decide its course of action. It's important to note that these observations are often collected by overriding a method called collect observations. However, the push agent basic class does not override this method. Instead, it relies on two Ray Perception Sensor 3D components attached to the agent. These sensors automatically collect observations by emitting rays in various directions to detect objects in the environment. This object detection data is then passed to the Python training backend, which uses it to determine the agent's next action. Anyway, as I've just mentioned, ML agents projects often make use of the Collect Observations method to define observations manually. To see this in action, let's switch to the 3D ball example scene. This scene provides a great demonstration of how the collect observations method is used to define the agent's understanding of its environment. In the 3D ball example, the agent's goal is to balance a ball on the cube character's head. To achieve this, it must observe relevant information about the environment, such as the position and velocity of the ball and the rotation of the character's head. These observations are manually defined in the collect observations method of the ball 3D agent class. Let's open the ball 3D agent script and take a closer look at how this method is implemented. The collect observations method takes in a vector sensor object, which serves as a container for the observations the agent collects at each step. These observations are added to the vector sensor and then passed to the training backend. I should mention that vector in this context does not refer to a 3D vector as used in Unity for positions or directions. Instead, the term comes from reinforcement learning terminology, where it refers to a collection of numerical values similar to an array. Anyway, in this method, we can see that the agent collects the following observations. The rotation of the character's head on the X and Z axes, which tells the agent how tilted its head is. The relative position of the ball which helps the agent understand where the ball is in relation to itself. And finally, the velocity of the ball, 
so the agent can predict how it's moving and adjust accordingly. Altogether, this method provides the agent with a total of eight values as observations, which it uses to understand the state of its environment and make decisions during training. Now let's switch back to the Unity editor and take a look at an important component that works alongside the agent class, the behavior parameters component. This component is automatically added when the agent script is attached to a game object. In behavior parameters, under the vector observation settings, you'll notice a field called space size. This value represents the size of the observation vector passed to the training backend. In our case, it's set to 8, matching the number of observations defined in the collect observations method. Right, that's enough about observations for now. Let's switch back to our original example, the push block scene. Let's return to the push agent basic script. We will now cover the on action received method. As we've discussed, once the training backend processes the agent's observations, it decides which actions the agent should perform in response. These actions are then executed within the on action received method. Inside the method, the agent receives the actions chosen by the training backend in the form of an action buffers object. In this example, these actions dictate how the agent moves in the environment. Here, the discrete actions property of the action buffers is passed to the move agent method. Let's take a quick look at it. Discrete actions are categorical choices, such as moving forward, backward or rotating, where the agent selects one action from a predefined set of options. This contrasts with continuous actions, which involve continuous values, such as acceleration or rotation angles. The discrete actions are passed into the move agent method, which interprets them and executes the corresponding movement. In this case, we are expecting only one action per step. Based on the action received, the agent may move forward, strafe sideways or rotate. OK, let's return to the on action received method. The last line, the call to the add reward method, applies a small penalty for each step the agent takes. This penalty discourages unnecessary movements and encourages the agent to complete its task more efficiently. Now, if we scroll upwards in the script, you'll find a method called scored a goal. This method is triggered whenever the block is successfully pushed into the green goal area. In this method, the first line also calls add reward, giving the agent a large reward for completing its task. This positive reinforcement helps the agent learn that pushing the block into the goal is the desired outcome. Note that the current episode is ended immediately after the reward is applied. Rewards like these play a crucial role in the reinforcement learning process. By associating positive rewards with successful actions and negative penalties with inefficient behavior, the agent gradually learns to make better decisions over time. These rewards allow the training backend to adjust its neural network, enhancing the agent's ability to predict the best action in any given situation. Through many training episodes, the agent refines its strategy, becoming more effective at completing its task. This reward-based system lies at the heart of reinforcement learning, allowing the agent to discover optimal solutions through trial and error. All right, I think that's enough for now. In this tutorial, we've covered a lot of ground, starting with an overview of reinforcement learning, then diving into how it's implemented in Unity's ML Agents framework. We explored key concepts like observations, actions and rewards, and took a closer look at the push block example to see these principles in action. I know the Python training backend might still feel like a bit of a black box at this stage, but don't worry, we'll unpack that when we reach the relevant parts of building our own project. Speaking of which, in the next episode, we'll take the first steps toward creating our very own ML Agents project from scratch. We'll set up a new Unity project, integrate it with ML Agents, and design a problem for our agent to solve. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. For now, goodbye, and see you in part three.